so recently, to many people's dismay, iPod was canceled. The iPod Touch was my first Apple product. I had great memories with it. And Apple just killed the whole product line. We're gonna take a walk down memory lane and look at some cool iPod Touch prototypes. Firstly, let's take a look at one that didn't come out. This iPod right here. As you might see from the outside, this looks pretty much like any iPod first gen ever. However, if you flip it around, you see something different. It's a metallic black like the 2013 Mac Pro. And that's a pretty huge difference. If we take a look at this iPod, while prototype, you can see, you know, the finished product, or at least this is a lot closer to it, is very different than this metallic black. So the thought process behind how this prototype came to be is it was likely from a materials prototyping team very early on in the development process of iPod. So initially, there isn't any huge obvious difference. The board is a little bit of a different color. The battery is unlabeled. Actually, a replacement is these units, unfortunately, tend to balloon. And well, as cool as an EVT battery is, it's not too great when it explodes inside your poor little prototype iPod. However, the back itself is completely finished all around in this black color. It also has this sort of Zen A text in it which interestingly enough, you can actually find similar text on a pre-EVT iPod. So after cracking this guy open, we can notice some differences. On the most major one would have to be the actual board. From the little bits you can see, it's completely red. On the back, we have the same sort of Zen text as we see here, which is something that they did for, I believe, aciding or maybe parts control on these early first gen iPods. So let me just for iterative purposes, jump into an EVT2 iPod. So this is later than this red board pre-EVT1, but still early. Notably, and something quite fun, is they actually went ahead and put the EVT2 label on them where you would typically get the gigabytes. This is the same for everything up until some stages of DVT. Serial number, config number, and unit number. So as we can see with the back off, we have yet again another color of board. In this case, more of a blue. And overall, a whole bunch of minor but noticeable changes that make it pretty obvious this is a prototype. The back as well has some Sharpie on the inside. It is really common for early stage prototypes of devices like this to just have handwritten notes from engineers describing, you know, configuration, color, and other some such. It's actually really cool to find things like this because it almost humanizes the machine that is Apple. Everybody thinks of Apple as just this massive company that just puts out all these products, but in reality, there are humans behind every little process. Finally, let's take a jump to the DVT. This is the closest to production iPod I have. So if we open up the DVT one, we see again, a different colored board. This one's dark blue. Unfortunately, I don't actually have a production iPod on hand to show you, but I believe it's none of the colors in front of us. This one also notably somewhat cool has its original protective sticker from the factory on the screen showing that for whatever reason it probably wasn't used. The back again we have a unit sticker and the markings and we have some really hard to read close up text indicating likely lot information and device information on the back. Interestingly it does actually say DVT on it. Overall, it's really cool to see how many iterations Apple goes through on something just like the first gen iPod. And this barely scratches the surface. I only have a small sample size of revisions. With the unit stickers, you can see this sort of big blocky letter. This is the variety of EVT, DVT, pre-EVT unit that this individual one is. So there's multiple configurations within a EVT or DVT family. I mean, shoot, if you really wanted to pause the video and compare these two stickers, you can see they're using different vendors, different manufacturers, different everything in these two models. And this is very common among any kind of prototype. It's not nearly as simple as just, you know, you pick A, A goes with A, B goes with B, C goes with C. You gotta try A with C, B with D. There's lots of options that have to be evaluated in the process of making a product. So I hope you enjoyed a surface level dive into some first gen iPod prototypes. If you're interested into the software, 
that these run or perhaps a more technical aspect, let me know in the comments and I'd love to make a video on it.